this is a problem that gives you a whole bunch of information, it seems like, and you have to organize it in order to find a gradient. That seems kind of lost, but it is there. We just have to find it. Okay, so in order for me to do this problem, what I do is organize my information that I have. So I'm given, so I have a function f of x, y, and I'm starting at the point 4, 5 and moving toward the point 5, 6. So the first step is to talk about where I'm starting and where I go towards. So I start at 4, 5 in the first round and I go to 5, 6. So that's the direction I'm moving in the vector direction. Number two, I start, oh wait, and then it says the directional derivative is 2. So my directional derivative of whatever the unit vector is in that way at 4, 5 is going to be 2. So this is going to give me u1 eventually. Second thing I'm given is that I have, I'm starting at 4, 5, whoops, 4, 5, and I go to 6, 6. And then it says my directional derivative at 4, 5 in this case is 3. Okay. So what I've done is I've taken the information that I have and, I, and I've organized it. My goal is to find the gradient of f. And I know the gradient of f is contained in each one of these. And since I'm starting at the same point, I'm using the same function, the gradient will be the same in both cases. So what I end up having here is two equations in two variables, and I just have to set that up. Now, in order to set it up, let's start with the information we have in part one. And let's find the vector between the two points, and I'll call it vector 1. So this vector is going to be 5 minus 4 comma 6 minus 5. 5 minus 4, 6 minus 5. And that gives me a lovely vector of 1, 1. Now I do need the unit vector for that vector, and uh, so I'm going to find the gradient of v1. Now if you suspect that this is already a unit vector, just find the uh, magnitude anyway. Did I say the gradient? I meant magnitude. Find the magnitude of it anyway, and just see, just test it, you know? Because when I look at this, I see the magnitude of this vector squared of 2. So that makes my unit vector 1 over square root of 2 comma 1 over square root of 2. It's a big deal right there. All right, now uh, the second issue, or the second direction, um, I go from 4, 5 to 6, 6. So my change in output or change in x value is 6 minus 4. My change in y value is 6 minus 5. Oh, and that gives me 2 comma 1. So the magnitude of v2 is square root of 2 squared plus 1 squared, which gives me square root of 5 it looks like. So then my unit vector in that direction is going to be 2 over square root of 5 comma 1 over square root of 5. Okay, now um, I have all the components I need to get the directional derivative. So knowing what the directional derivative formula is, I know that f sub u1 at 4, 5 will be the dot product between the gradient f sub x comma f sub y, and the unit vector, 1 over square root of 2, 1 over square root of 2. And according to this, that's supposed to be 2. Now, um, to do the second one, so this is f u1, so this is f sub u2 at 4, 5. So according to the directional derivative formula, I have f sub x comma f sub y dotted with 2 over square root of 5 comma 1 over square root of 5. And according to that, that's supposed to be 3. Now what I have built right here is two equations, two unknowns. The unknowns f sub x and f sub y. Two equations, two unknowns. So let me then solve that equation. First of all, I'm going to build the dot products that are on the right, or excuse me, the left. So the dot product is going to be f sub x times 1 over square root of 2 plus f sub y 1 over square root of 2. And that's supposed to be 2. That's this part. Here I have f sub x 2 over square root of 5 plus f sub y 1 over square root of 5. And that's supposed to be 3. So again, my goal is to solve for f sub x and f sub y because that's what they want. Find the gradient, which is f sub x and f sub y. 
All right, so here I am. Now I'm just going to pretend that this is two equations, two unknowns. So I'm going to take the top equation and multiply by square root of 2. Why am I going to do that? Because I don't like the denominators as stands. And then down here, I'm going to do the same thing, but with a square root of 5. 2 over square root of 5 plus f sub y. 1 over square root of 5. It's giving me 3 square roots of 5. Okay, so uh, let's move down this direction following what we're doing here. So I distribute the square root of 2. I get f sub x times 1 plus f sub y times 1 gives me 2 square root of 2. And then down here, this gives me... 2f sub x plus 1f sub y gives me 3 square root of 5. So here's my system again. My goal is to solve for f sub x and f sub y. Now when I look at this, I see this is linear. These are all to the power of 1. So I'm going to multiply the numerator times a negative and add the two equations. So this is going to become negative f of x, f sub x minus f sub y equals minus 2 square root of 2. And then I have 2f sub x plus f sub y equals 3 square root of 5. I add those together and I eliminate f sub y. So what I'm left with then is f sub x equals 3 square root of 5 minus 2 square root of 2. Now there's nothing I can do to make that more simple. So just leave it like that. Don't panic, just leave it. Now then what I'm going to do is come back to this equation and plug in my f sub x value, and then find f sub y. So here I have f sub x, which is 3 square root of 5 minus 2 square root of 2, plus f sub y equals 2 square root of 2. Now I just ignore the negative. I, I don't have to use the negative. That was the way to eliminate. So I just put this in without the negative. So then to isolate f sub y, I have to move these over. So I get this 2 square root of 2, add that 2 square root of 2, and subtract that 3 square root of 5. So that's going to give me, uh, so there's 1, 2 square root of 2s plus 2 more, so that's 4 square root of 2 minus 3 square root of 5. So my gradient of f at 4, 5 is equal to 3 square root of 5 minus 2 square root of 2, comma, 4 square root of 2, minus 3 squared of 5. I hope that helped.